Hi everyone, I'm back for part two of Journal with Thread, the Jessie Chorley slow stitched book. So I just wanted to go through a few things. Last, last episode, I did talk about a couple of things that relate to how I work. And what I wanted to look at first was whether the iron-on transfers did more than one iron-on. So um, you might want to watch that one if you didn't already. Um, but here we go. Uh, I did trace off this back page. So I've torn out the back page and I've traced it onto a little bit of greaseproof paper. And that was just in case I ironed it off and it was gone completely. Um, but as with these, um, I got three. I got three bits. So the first one, I lifted it to have a look at how it was going. And of course, it moved a little bit. I'm no expert at these things and I'm still learning. But that could still be used if you use a thick thread and couch it down. A bit, bit like Jessie's style. Um, I will probably just use this for this particular book and this is the third one and it's fairly light but you can still see enough to stitch on that but I'm also noticing on this original that I tore out of the book that the lines appear to be a hell of a lot darker now once it's been ironed so I don't think there'll be ever any problems with tracing it off if you need to trace it off. Uh, the other thing is ironing it down, you can probably see through, it'll come out the opposite way with the little needle with the thread on on the left as it looks on here. And that's how it'll look when you stitch it. But if you're going to trace it off, with a bit of grease proof and then put um, some graphite or something on the back, put it on your linen or whatever you want to trace it off onto. And use your pencil to get a graphite shape, um, you know, to come off from the back. Uh, it's going to be the opposite way. So that's just something to bear in mind. That's not something I particularly worry about. I don't know if Jessie would worry about how uh, if her design was flippy floppied because sometimes you do flippy floppy your design because you like to see it a different way. Anyway, as promised, I have made covers from the packaging. So I just because I just love this tape. It just it was all around the, the whole package, like so, one side, the other side, and I have kept the bubble wrap inside, lined it with a bit of spare material. And some people will know this material if they've been watching me for a while. Yeah, that sheet has got a lot of good use. And then what I've done is I've stitched all the way around. Actually, I stitched last and put this on last because I didn't say I did a whole heap of collage. I've used some of Rachel's beautiful um, 19, uh, um, 1980s, 1890s or earlier um, Italian rag paper for my collage and a bird. And I did, on the last video, I showed you how I did a frittage of the, the raised surface. So this is a ra raised and putting this paper over it and using a um, wax crayon has given this this effect so it's called frittage in French if you didn't watch last week's episode so this is two I've got this one that's got my name on it because it came to me so this will be my first one and I will probably be putting a blend of paper and material in this and stitching probably down the middle same with this one and this has got the whole journal with thread cover on there um, and the swan which is one of the motifs so uh, these are going to be two little journals Th this one's going to definitely be mine and be my working as I go this one I don't know yet we'll wait and see anyway as per the instructions from the book 
I have got, this is a damask tablecloth. It's got um, wadding in the middle. I've tucked all the edges over and I want to just show you how beautiful this inside. I wanted to keep this. I definitely did this on purpose. I wanted this edging of the tablecloth. I'll show you and it's quite likely gone very wibbly wobbly yep it has because well that's what happens and I, I'm not doing anything about that that's just the way it is and let's have a little stitch so there'll be an outer one and an inner one and the inner one I've made the wadding just that little bit just a little bit shorter because when you put one inside because of the thickness of the tablecloth and the wadding it pushes it out a little bit so if you make it just a little bit shorter it's more likely to line up I think with my work I'm not really I'm not trying to be absolutely perfect because I've really only been stitching for quite a short while like really in terms of some people who've been doing it all their life so for me every time I do a project like this I acknowledge that I'm learning still <laughs> it's been three four years so I've learned a lot but there's still things I learn and you know I really admire people that can, that can get this absolutely perfect line and this perfect square shape etc but every time, like I say, every time I do a project like this, I learn something that makes makes it a bit easier. For instance, when I was ironing the batting, it's wool. And for I just have my iron set on for cotton for everything. And I realised it's wool, it's going to burn, it's going to stick to the iron. And I made it on the wool setting um, and these are things maybe I knew when I was younger, when I was doing a little bit of um, ironing and bits and pieces. But I don't know, when you've been off doing other things out in the world and you come back, it's quite quite interesting how, how different things are. It's like you've got to learn all over again. So I'm just moving a pin along just so I don't, don't get these too much of a bulk up here. it's really really lovely to be doing a fabric book again I know we've been doing them with Rachel and Sarah for quite a while um, and trying all different things like concertina and stuff like that but I haven't actually been thinking like I said in the last video since I did the uh, book with Anne Brooke um, three years ago I haven't made an effort to make a concerted um, finely stitched or is that the right word I mean I love my creative stitchings so so we'll anyway we will wait and see what happens So even though we've got Jessie's template, she does say in the book that we can add our own flavour to that. We can even add our own templates. And I do um, think that I've got a page of templates that I was doing for red work. It's got mushrooms and things on, so it might not, may or may not blend in with Jessie's style. However, I'm going to get it out and have another look at it and even possibly um, look at doing another template like another one of my little red work ones I do love uh, the picture of Jessie's book where it's all stitched like this around the edge with white on white but the stitch for the seam is red and I went yeah that's that's right up my alley <laughs> I would love to do a bit more of my motifs in red and add them in throughout the book so we're going to go on a journey together and see what happens 
So I hope you're joining in and stitching along and a couple of people have said to me from Instagram, they've said, oh, I got my book and everyone's a bit excited about it. So it's just going to be fun to use some of uh, Jessie's templates and uh, work a little bit in her style and learn, learn as I go. Um, so that's it for today and thanks for coming along for the journey. Thank you to the wonderful new subscribers. Um, great community. So wonderful. And uh, I will see you in the next one. Bye for now.